14th NLA Laga 5th Session D House spread discussion on matters of urgent public importance under Rule 50 Bidor. Bishi Charja Kuritaka Nagan political issue Upper Kota Krushe. NPP MLA Nuklo Tushibra Nagaland political issue Upper Kushegi final solution to Chuldi implement Kuribule Lage. Nuklo Tushibra Kushegi issue do exosal Upper Jaise Aro Nagas come free Aro self determined Takiwale Monase. Noklo de Shibra Gushegi, NSA and IMBRA Framework Agreement do Public Domain de Anivolia Paranai, Aro Agreement do Nagas Karnia Sequile, Chandagi de Kavli Lage Quigna, Assert Krishe. Noklo de Shibra Framework Agreement, Aro Agreed Position Laga Content do Public Domain de Anivoli Lage Gushe. Taibra mentioned Gushegi Stroger Bra, Platform Acta Initiate Kuribali Lage, Aro Solution Anivoli Karne, Sop Nagas Bra, Hisalavoli Lage. Let us now come to item number three, discussion on matters of urgent public importance under Rule 50. <coughs> Honourable members, I have received a notice from Sri Kuzulu Zonenu, Honourable Member, and supported by Honourable Member Sri Nobuto Shi and Dr. Sukato Sema, for discussion on matters of urgent public importance pertaining to Naga political solution issue under Rule 50 and I have agreed it with taken up today. Honourable members, in this connection, I have received a list of members who wishes to speak. I request all honourable members to be brief in their participation and contribution to ensure efficient use of time as uh, put forward by our honourable MLA Sri Kuzanyan Indiano. The cushion, even in cushion hour, what is observed is that we must always understand that there are other subsequent important questions. But uh, it is observed that one question consumes more than one hour. So we we run this uh, esteemed house under rules of procedure of procedures and conduct of business. So in this case also, uh, uh, this matters of urgent public importance also. There are numerous speakers. So please understand that there are you know more speakers uh, behind you. So please be judicious with the time. I will request Honorable Member Sri Kusanto Zonyenu to initiate the discussion. The Deputy Speaker, sir, thank you for cautioning also. I'll be very brief. I have prepared a paper, paper presentation. Yes, time is limited, but these are important issues we have to consider and understand. At the same time, I'll take hardly 15 minutes, but always remember, it has always been a tradition that the initiator gets a little extra time. <coughs> All of us, most of us, yesterday we, we were discussing. Many of us does not know the background and the Naga political issue history. Only a few of us seniors like RCM, Deputy, including Kaito, including our Parliamentary Affairs Minister Ajay, they might know something. Whereas others like me, we are quite new to this. So it is very important that we know this Naga political history. Now the next generation, after our generation, they are almost all point blank. So I want to appeal to the leader of the house that in order to keep our Naga political history and aspiration alive, we have to inculcate, we have to make this Naga political history a compulsory subject from nursery itself or from class 1 till class 8, something like that, so that history will be continued. I can also rest assure you, out of the 100% so-called national workers, 95% will not know Naga political history. I'll give you a brief, brief background and go to the important events with dates, years, and figures. <coughs> Therefore, I have to reveal it. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, has stated, in the early days, Nagas never organized ourselves into groups or tribes in the past. Therefore, Nagas was a unique group of people. Therefore, people stay, take our history to be unique. Organizing ourselves into regions and tribes are a modern phenomenon. Our primary identities were the clan identity and the village identity. The clan identity normally is the bloodline 
identity, while the later, that is the village identity, is the social political identity. Interestingly, our clans never live together in groups like clans or tribes or other ethnic groups. Clans scattered themselves in different villages. Now, meeting warfare and practice of war headhunting was for show of power and strength primarily, or to avoid being occupied or, or being dominated. We practice such things. In short, Nagas love their independence and desire to be left alone. In the anglo burma War of 1826, the British colonel Raj gained control of, the, of a significant part of Northeast India, including Naga Hills. Despite their external control of the, of the region, the Nagas in general enjoyed their traditional autonomy <coughs> till 20th century without undue interference. The British colonel left the Indian sub-Indian continent without making any administrative link with many Naga groups, free Nagas or unadministered Nagas. It may be noted that India Myanmar bound international boundary was only drawn in 1967. The Nagas desired not to be ruled or governed or understood and recognized by the British colonial rulers following a series of war, like notably the Konoma Angami village war and the Krekrama Chakasam village war, which were, are officially do documented in 1851 by Dalhousie following stiff resistance from the Nagas and the same was formalized in the Government of India Act 1853. If Nagas loved their village life independence without collective identity or any of that sort. How did they, their independence movement came about? That's one big question. The answer is a divine miracle story. Few important factors and causes may be highlighted. Number one, introduction of Christianity by the American missionaries in the mid 19th century and subsequently conversion of the Nagas from their ancestral amnestic religion to Christianity. The gospel of love found in Christianity made them reach out to their fellow Nagas. A point to be noted. It may be noted that the American missionaries were not known to have encouraged Naga movement for independence despite the suspicious and allegations of the Indian state. For their alleged role, the American missionaries were forced to leave the country by 1960. As noted above, the resistance spirit existed before the Nagas embraced Christianity. Nagas were not known to have any interest in joining any neighboring states like or kingdoms like for instance Manipur Kingdom or the Ahom Kingdom or the Burmese Kingdom. Instead, they fought them to retain their independence though some tried to maintain good relationships. Had we been conquered, had we were to been uh, under any kingdom, today we'll be in Manipur or in under Ahom or Burmese kingdom, but we never wanted to be that. In the introduction of modern, number two point is, introduction of modern education through mission schools gave them the ability to communicate with different Naga groups. Schools also gave them a platform to meet, opportunity to be in the service of the British colonial Raj and the experience of the two world wars both in our homeland and outside the Naga homeland. It may be noted that Naga Club was the first organization of the Nagas formed by the Nagas who went to Europe, Europe as part of the British labor crops during the First World War. It was the same Naga Club which submitted the memorandum to the British Simon Commission in 1929 with a slogan to leave the Nagas alone, to determine their own way of life as in the ancient times. The phrase, leave us alone, a direct quote from the memorandum, is powerful enough. This imagery clearly expresses the desire of the Nagas to be in a village, not to be a part of a state. Overall, the memorandum is a request to the colonial British not to leave the Nagas in the hands of any other power state if they decided to end their relationship with the Nagas and not to subject the Nagas to any reforms. The above factors 
forge a sense of unity among the Nagas and helped us to articulate our modern Naga identity. It was the desire to be left alone, to determine our own life and future that gave birth to modern Naga identity and Naga nationalism. This Naga club slogan of 1929 got its formal recognition in the Government of India Act 1935. After this only, the Naga Hills was demarcated as an excluded area. However, even before this formal representation was made to the British India government, the Angami Naga Kaumburas met the Viceroy during the latest visit to Imphal in 1909. One, 1901, this date is, many of our used to be this date, but this date is very important, and declared that Nagas were not subject to anyone except their own village before the British took control of the Naga areas. This can be found in government file number 445-15, Tor Diary of late W.N. Kennedy, ICS, officiating DC Naga Hills from July 19,000 to 1901. Christianity and Naga Freedom Movement. These are also important factors. The historical fact of the Nagas, Gaumuras, asserting the rights of the Nagas in 1901 provides a good piece of evidence that the desire of the Nagas to be left alone, left free, was not the result of American missionaries' influence, as I stated earlier. People suspect the American missionaries that they influenced us, they influenced us to separate or to resist, but they were they are never. The Christian population in Nagaland was less than one percent at that time. As a matter of fact, history shows rapid conversion to Christianity took place in the peak of Indian military occupation in the 90s and 60s. Till 1940, the percentage was below 140. There is still been, till 1940s, percentage of Christianity was below 15%. Even after 100 years of missionary, immigrant missionaries working with us. But, the, but it jumped to 46% in 1950 and 52% in 1960 and kept increasing till date. So therefore now, when you do a research, this strongly suggests that the atrocities of the Indian state forces against the Nagas somehow had something to do with the Nagas' conversion into Christianity. You know, American missionary panel, American atrocities, American people, Murak, Rep, 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 now coming to the most important events, important events of Naga political history, how it was made, who contributed, what group contributed the most, you'll find it here. There may be some mistakes. My research may be on and may not be 100 percent right, but I think I have at least 80 percent right figures here. Perhaps the origin of the Naga freedom struggle may be traced back to the Treaty of Yandambo signed in 1826 during Burma and the British. Although our country was not defined in the treaty, it got engulfed and tangled as the treaty divided the Naga territory between India and Burma, now known as Myanmar, without the knowledge and consent of the Nagas. See, look at Mr. Dibunisimu, look at the way they treated the Nagas at that time. Without our consent, without consultation, they even divided our land. Following the arrival of the British into the Arnaga territory in the year 1822 and the violent Recent, uh, re resistance attitude shown by the uh, Nagas, the British adopted a policy of non interference in the year 1851 and 1853 policies. In order to protect the unique culture and lifestyle of the Naga tribes, including many Nordists, the British Parliament introduced the, in, the, and implemented the Inner Line Permit. Inner Line Permit was born at that time, built as a part of the famous. Bengal Eastern Frontier and Regulation Act 1873. The bill restricted citizens of India to enter our land until and unless they obtain a permit. That permit is in a land permit. At present, the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation 1873 continues to apply in the present day Arunachal, Mizoram, and Naga. By 1879, the British took control of some parts of the Indian territory and called themselves, called the, called the administered areas Naga Hill and the inhabitants, the Naga subjects. The Naga outside this area were called Free Nagas, unadministered area. Then came First World War, one of the
the most important events, wherein some 2,000 Nagas were recruited and sent to France to fight alongside the British force as Naga little tops. Though they were not meant to fight at the front lines, the material nature of the Nagas took the better of them, and many of them fought bravely at the front line. One can still see memorials erected in Europe to honor those brave Naga warriors. Many historians are of the view that the war veterans on their return to their homeland established the Naga Club in 1918. Perhaps in the sense of mutual trust and friendship among the people and the solidity developed during their exposure to the outside world. However, based on 1901 voice of the Nagas, it is clearly evident that the desire of the Nagas was to be left alone. Nagas had no desire to become a part of any state. Becoming a part of any state would be antithetical to our culture and tradition, which gave our ancestors so much freedom. In the year 19 10 January, the British Naga subjects, called Naga Club, demanded independence when the Indian Statutory Commission, headed by Sir John Simon, visited Kohima to get the opinion of the Nagas whether they would join the coming new reforms, which afterwards became the government of Act 1935. In the year 1935, the Naga Hills was kept outside the purview of government of India Act 1935 as an uh, excluded area. In the following year, in the 1936, Naga Hills was allowed to remain excluded area outside the Indian Constitution Act 1935. The Naga Club transformed into a formal political organization, first as Naga Hills. NNC did not come first, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Naga Hills Tribal Council established in 1945. He became the undisputed leader and retained the position till his death in 1990. Ms. Adina daughter assumed the presidency from first May 1990 till date. In 1946, when the British cabinet mission was sent to India, the NNC informed the mission that Naga future would not be bound by any arbitrary decision of the British government and that the Nagas would not accept any recommendation without consultation. A point to be noted, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In one of the Nehru's letters when he was in jail, he stated that a stretch of portion or a portion of land between India and Burma does not belong to Burma and India. He gave a clear statement. That means we Nagas are free. But the fate of the Naga political movement took a new U-turn when he became, Nehru became the Prime Minister. Nehru perceived the Naga aspiration differently. He wrote in a letter to the NNC, it is obvious that the Naga territory in eastern Assam is too small to stand by itself, politically and economically. It lies between the two countries, India and China, and a part, it, and a part of it consists of rather backward people who requires considerable help. Eventually, some part of the Naga homeland became part of Indian independence, while some became Myanmar, that time Burma. In 1947, the controversial Akbar Haidi Accord, also known as the Nine Point Agreement, was signed between the governor of, governor of Assam and the NNC after deliberation for three days. They deliberated for three days, June 26, 27, and 28 in 1947. However, due to different interpretation of both the parties, it became a death agreement. The difference is the governor of Assam as an agent of the government of India Union will have a special responsibility for 10 years to ensure the observance of the agreement. At the end of this period, the Naga Council shall be asked whether they require the above agreement to be extended for a further period or new agreement regarding the Naga future of the Naga people arrive at. The interpretation of the Naga Mr. Deputy Speaker is that after 10 years, Nagas can choose to become a free nation. That was our interpretation. The British uh, government of India's interpretation was different. The interpretation was that India will decide the fate of the Nagas after 10 years of this agreement. That, with that difference, this agreement became a deadlock. The tribes that represented and on this agreement and signed the agreement were Western Angamis, Eastern Angamis, Kukis, Kachanaga, Renmas, Semas, Lotas, Aus, Sangtams, and Changs. In the year 1947, Naga delegation met Mahatma Gandhi in July 19 in New Delhi at Bangri Colony and informed him of the decision of the Nagas to be independent. 
Gandhi approved the Naga independence. Gandhi's statement. I'll read it out. Nagas have every right to be independent. This is his clear statement. We did not want to live under the dominance of the British. They are leaving us now. I want you to feel that India is yours. I feel Naga Hills are mine, just as much as they are yours. But if you say it is mine, then the matter must stop there. I believe in brotherhood of men, but I do not believe in fourth or fourth union. That was his statement. If you do not wish to join the Union of India, nobody can force you to do that. In 1947, on 14 August, very important date for the Nagas, Nagas declared our independence. The government of India and the United Nations were for informed through cable subsequently. Nagas must remember, Mr. Deputy Speaker, Nagas must remember, we have declared our independence before India declared their independence. Therefore, the world, the world must recognize this. Had we declared our independence after the Indian independence, they can term us as hostile, they can term us as traitors, they can term us as rebellion, or call our problem as insurgency-related problem. They can call us that. But today, they can never call us in such a manner. History clearly shows. In the year 1949, November 28, 11 members of Naga delegation met with the Governor General for free ourselves from India, Sri Ram Gopala Chari in Shillong, His Excellency. He also said the same thing. Nagas are at full liberty to become independent if they feel it. Then in the year 1950, January 1904, delegation of NMC went to Delhi to meet the Governor General of India. An interview was refused by external ministry and the delegation was advised to meet the Governor of Assam. In 1950, the same year, 14 January, as advised by the external ministry, a delegation went to Shillong to meet the Governor of Assam, Shri Prakashan. Again, there also, he also stated again that, that Indian constitution cannot bind the Nagas. Nagas are at full liberty to be In 1950, it will take only hardly, hardly two minutes now. So then came the Naga Plebiscite, the most important event conducted in 1951. The government of India was informed in January regarding the plan to conduct the Naga Voluntary Plebiscite and a letter was sent to, to the President of India for sending their representatives for observe, uh, observing the occasion. Naga did nothing in hidden. So finally in April 14, uh, April 11, the Plebiscite was announced to start in March 16, 1951. So on May, March 16, 1951, the Naga Voluntary Paper Site was successfully conducted with 99.9% .9 voting in favor of sovereign Indian Naga Nation. In the same year, 1951, on August 19 uh, December, the 23 member <coughs> Naga Delhi went to Shillong and asked the governor of Assam, Jaim Ram Das Dalutar Ram, to forward the result of the Naga Voluntary Paper Site to the government of India, New Delhi. But he refused to do the proposal. Then again came 1956 in March 22. Nagaland became a republic with the merger of Hong Kong government representing the Naga Free Nagas and the NNC representing the Nagas. The then FGN was formed. Hong Kong government is more or less the Eastern Naga NNC. Eastern Naga NNC and our NNC combined formed the FGN. On 26 April 1960, the controversial 16-point agreement between the government of India and Naga People's Convention was signed. A participation of only overgrounds and not undergrounds. February 1961 saw the renaming of Naga Hills to some area to Nagaland. After much negotiation and deliberation, Nagaland became the 16th state of India in 1st December 1963. So it is crystal clear that our state was carved out of the 16-point agreement. The first ceasefire was signed between the Nagas and the government of India in 1964 through an initiative by the NBCC. December 1973 saw new births of district Zenel Poto and Moka being carved out of Mokokchung, Pek district being carved out of Kohima, Mon being carved out of Pakistan. Now, Peace Accord, Shillong Accord, November 11, 1975. This is where things went wrong. 
he left six, six, six person attended it. And Mr. Veni Rako was the only person among the six members who refused to sign the agreement. The, this accord sowed the seed of discord, discord among the NNC members. A reminder to the Nagas and government of India is that on the same year, dated 25 November 1975, published in the London Times by late Fizzo, is, is denouncing the signing and his participation in <coughs> accord and stating that he has nothing to do with this Shalom accord. His only desire is that the, that any Shalom should, should be honorable and acceptable. Then in the year 1980, 31st January, after a gap of 34 years of its existence, the NNC finally split into two groups, namely NNC and NSCN. I, NSCN. Following this split, the Nagas movement has witnessed civil split. Today we said we are talking about 25 to 26 groups. There are many NNCs and NSCN groups today. On August 1st, 1997, a ceasefire was signed between the government of India and NSCN IM. It is still operational. During this agreement, several rounds of political talks between the government of India and the NSCN have been taking place without, within and outside the state. Then came framework agreement. Now I find the end. Framework agreement was signed between the government of India and NSCN IM on 3rd August 1215. Then after a gap of two years, a great position was signed between the government of India and Naga National Political Groups on November 17, 2017. Then, to our surprise, on 31st October, RN Ravi, the then governor, 31 of us were present here. In his speech, declared that the talks were concluded. <coughs> to me, after much talk, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, the word concluded without any positive outcome may mean that the both agreements have been rejected by the government of India. If so, we may have to go back to our original demand. Today, I can see your impatience, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I have only two more paras. Today, today Naga is having 26, 20, 25, 25, who call themselves as national workers. It's not something which we can be proud of. For me, this is something we should be ashamed of. For 34 years, there has been an undivided NNC, and this was the true mandate of the Nagas. Therefore, what we need now is another undivided NNC to take forward our Naga political issue till such time we achieve our aspiration if the two agreements are not honored. Honorable members, as leaders, we must speak the truth and stand up for the truth. Let us call all national workers to come under one umbrella and to create another undivided NNC in order to achieve our long desired goal. That is sovereignty and nothing besides sovereignty. Last suggestion, I would like to repeat again. As we have observed over the years, all talks and negotiations have miserably failed due to non-participation of both overgrounds and undergrounds together. So in order to make the talks successful, I would like to suggest that both the parties take part in the talks. And so therefore, as I stated yesterday, I want to repeat again, legislators should not be only play the role of facilitator, but should be a part of the negotiation to wind up and bring this to a logical conclusion. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And to Sri Nukrutoshi, Honorable Member. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, sir. For allowing discussion on the matter of Margin Public Important under Rule 50, Naka Political Issue. This Naka political issue, there's no issue more important than this issue of Naka people. The Buddhist speaker, sir, Naka people were unoccupied, unadministered, and independent people before the British period. Do they also Naka people desire to be free? from Indian occupation without any condition, not to talk about flight and constitution. In this person, if we go back and see from 
on the day Naga people's desires for self-determination. Like Angabi, Angami Kaumburas submitting representation to the British Karma in 1901, which is now 121 years ago. Formation of Naga Club, 1918, which is 106 years ago. And the submission of Memunan Namto, Summon Commission, 1989, which is 95 years ago. Naga Manohan, desires to for freedom, self determination to which what I wanted to see is hundred years of our paraphrase. Key incident which is to exercise over the Gutak Gui Gui Navi Exal Gulli Gurunga. Nakamano Aro Kamna Pitya take care with me, be she sign worship. But without understanding and consultation with the people. It over I'm going to increment so to Hiller. Well, Manuha for a hundred percent, Naka Manuha, except for one. It took us. Lastly, the framework increment sign version. It is in Ayubara. A Greek position sign version, seven and then PGP. And then Pichigan. Tagan, a great position the Tagan contains to public to win the election. Whereas, unfortunately, Amar <coughs> NHC in IMG, framework economic law contains a data public to win the election. You do framework equipment to Nagamanu Khan in Hoi. Tarakat Nagamanu Khan in Hoi. You take that. You do Nagamanu Khan in Hoi. You do framework equipment to create position sign for Abhijiti. And then basically, to I'm going to keep from the other police day. Government of the other police day. I'm going to have a top pick and close. Framework equipment, and it's an icon for a flight in Kapsuki. Will it be? Naka public key said that he said. It do Churigina election book is it? Election day for us here. Nagama no so. It do agreement to Idadu Lugina, Nagama no, Gutabur Poleg was so. Election day para dare is again. So as you give us it? Kill each other. We saw Murong Gurara Nagamano Nagala political issue is struggle for the soul of Lino Lina. We say, We see Murong Gurido. Ah, it has after election into sixty Emily and this other house. Kurukum Sas Maria Zede Kiba into spiritual music for us. No little Kali is little Bagia. Tamara Bisu Chilikara Tash. Kale Bursong. 
n b a 이렇게 된다 그지? 여기 이스틱 가르먼 아미간 오너블 리더 오브 더 하우스 브라이 로기나 보이사 졸라나이 이스틱 비 렉션 보이사 졸라나이 네 액점 클린 일리션 오시 기 오시 롤링 가르먼 당기기나 이스프리션 바님 자야 주거나 Sub mano, ada kita kamera sebelah ni. Bisa tu lana itu. Aro kau je, you will be the next lagi. Ah, you will, you will be the next itu. Aro NDBB aro BGB visual dia. Bisa tu lana itu. Itu apa sih? Nak apa no? Ah, jadi kau yang ada? Naga public kan? Underground kan ke? Teks mana? Itu mana? Komplain kau yang ada? Kini komplain kau yang ada? Helix ini kau nak pujasa tu di mana? Itu underground kan tu? Pit pit naik. Nisur pasap mai ke naik? Kira apa ni kata kami? Oksigen aru panik pura do, ikla pura do, dah ambil life, nara kita do. Kali ni kita ada problem solve kerbau di publican, nak apa public pura seriously lawan, urgently lawan. Asyik tu tu payah tu nak? Itu asyik tu. Itu sub kuasa program pura pura. Swigger, the good is Swigger, sir. Ajay Arusa. American government of India, government of India, government of India, with India. He got a government of India, where I said, Framework equivalent sign push it, we could push it, sign push it. Don't have to use the good of We don't have to blame government of India now. And this is what is possible. And what is not possible, they have already undertaken from the law, from the government. It is pretty clear. Keep possible as you push it, it will push it. Queen no hope of it, it will no hope of it. Aru laga bang ki lagi. Ki kone no hope li laga plan grasa. Ki kone ti of the current ki plan grasa. Naga bang ki to. Government of India, as a facilitator, I mean, can be. We have supported the framework agreement. We have supported the great position as a facilitators. And government of India, along with the respective branches, <coughs> they have signed. So, in short, I'll go. So, so many speakers are going to speak. Government of India, do Nagamanu ki ko have to unia zedo. You do rukia zedo. Ami ang lahat pisis ng lugar siyono. So the need of the hour for naka people is another referendum. Like 1951's referendum. The contents of the framework agreement are a great position to public community ay mula. Public community kung yung mga yung and then let the public decide, let the Naga people decide whether they want solution or sovereignty. Let them decide. We as the government, we will only facilitate, we will support. Let them decide. The day of the government as a facilitator, we must provide platform and financial support to the people. Naka people must be in, invited from all walks of life. Ah. Like all the village councils from 1,280 recognized villages in Nagaland, 
All travel rules with rich leaders. Suppose like Mukhtung district. Kali also done doing it. I am in six rich asset. Six rich leaders have been matrimonial. You know where? Church leaders from all denomination, NSF, ANSF, and all tribal student bodies, all tribal youth organization. Nakahus, NBU, NDC, CNDC, and JDB unit, and so on. All Naka intellectuals should be invited, especially Naka officers. He's a Naka club formation to form around the you know, Naka officers come from Budu Purina formation. As you be Talam intellectual and Talam Vishnu Amunagi, Naka political issue. There is nothing important, more important issue than Naka political issue. You know, it's to come with the Yola again. Naka Mother Association, all tri tribal women over the season, the Yola again. All Naka GPs Federation, all 60 MLAs, MLAs including two MPs. Let us take days and months also and decide the fate of Naka people once and for all. The Buddhist speaker, sir. It over Amilan Karman Pra Edishi Purina. We took that from the political again immediately. I wrote Goa Vishna. So, Nakamano Parata, we do participate in the decision. Nikal Mola Yamilan. Lastly, Amilan Nakamano Laga, father of the nation, to ease the Vizu was it. Is it Vizu? Amigan fiction to 26 Fuji. Alphabet B, E to Z to 26 as it. Aro Itubara Obudu, fiction to Abudu Dibu again. It's a significance that the first of Purna Amigan, Nagamano Bade, Ikta, Yudu fiction creation, Nurikna, final solution, Ikta Nikoli. You will like or not, if you last time, you can go to it. Thank you, Tim Jesu. Emporium Nagaland is India's leading aviation, hospitality and cruise line training institute with 100% job placement assistance in India and abroad. We provide customised workshops for various organisations and internship programme for college students. We aim to empower educated, unemployed youths with global opportunities. We love Emporium!